Hey guys, Evan Lauchs here for Engine Builder and we're just north of Memphis, Tennessee in Bolivar and we're here at Choate Engineering Performance taking a look at this really clean looking 6.7 power stroke. It's your Diesel of the Week. Engine Builder's Diesel of the Week is sponsored by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. So guys, I'm joined here by Cass Choate of Choate Engineering Performance. He's going to tell us all about this engine. And you know, Cass, to start, you, you told us a little yesterday about some of the pitfalls of the, of the 6.7 platform. What are some of the things you do to remedy those issues in your engine builds? Sure, the 2011 to present day engine, you know, keep in mind the 6.7 power stroke has actually been on the scene longer than the 7.3, which is a really hard thing to fathom because that seems like, you know, that engine just never died in our mind. It's the holy grail of all power strokes. But they've had a lot of time to adapt and change this engine from 2011 to present day. So it's gone through a lot of different revisions. Um, one of the big problems that they had right from the start was the clearances on this engine. Way too tight of clearances. Um, they were really struggling to uh, increase fuel mileage. And in doing so, seven and eight tenths on the mains were just entirely too tight. So we started seeing a lot of the bearing spin, a lot of lower end failure um, from that. So that was where we wanted to address. That was the first big problem that we, we saw. Um, so we worked with some bearing manufacturers to come up with uh, a lot higher tensile strength bearing with the right clearance uh, to fix that first. Um, after that, moving up kind of geographically uh, on the engine, a lot of the problems we saw were the crank gear spinning. So you'd come in, you'd see 32 push rods that were all bent and immediately you knew that the, the gear had spun. Uh, all gears, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what type of build we do, but all gears get TIG welded uh, just to make sure that that does not happen. Uh, from there, um, the rods were a weak link on, on certain uh, models, so we addressed that. Uh, but one of the major failures right out of the gate with this engine was the valves. Um, we definitely work with SDI on all our, our ventures for valves on cylinder heads and different things like that, but we wanted something that fixed the problem the OE had. Um, and that was, we saw a lot of valve, exhaust valve failure specifically um, on the earlier 11 to 15 models. So those are a few of the things though that we've worked on to develop for the 6.7 power stroke to make it a reliable platform um, and make it something that, um, that was ever bit as consistent as 7.3. So as you can see behind us, you got all your Rottler machines and you know, you do all your machining in house. So as far as the bore and the hone, what are you kind of seeing on the machining side for an engine like this? Yeah, like, like I said, you know, parts are only one part of the equation. So you can bolt something in, but if it doesn't fit like it should from the factory, uh, the way that they should have done it from the factory, that's not gonna fix the problem. So we got another chance at life at this thing, you might say. So again, going back to the seven, eight tenths clearance that we were seeing on the mains, opening that up, changing those clearances, allows for a long, happy life. So grinding the crankshaft, it might be, it might be clearance. And one of the big things that we do um, is actually on our other side of the shop, which is a part manufacturing. Everything on this side of the shop is pretty much engine manufacturing as it pertains to remanufacturing the engine. The other side of the shop pertains to um, things as part manufacturing that will support this side. Mm -hmm. So billet main caps are a big plus. It's something that we use a lot of uh, repairing these engines. Uh, so we do a lot of machine work there, obviously torque plate honing uh, and some of the other, other things that we do with the block um, as far as um, surface finishes, uh, balanced rotational assemblies. That was a big thing that we saw yesterday. We, were, we had some uh, things that we recorded to show guys the difference between the balance job from the factory and what we're doing actually here is about six to seven times better. And you know, you told me before the video started, this is kind of more one of your mild build builds. What kind of application would this engine be used for as far as, is it, it's probably not used in any competition, more for like a work right. truck. This is gonna be your guy that bought this truck to haul his camper, to haul his boat, to haul his horses. You know, he, he, he's a diesel enthusiast. He loves a 6.7 truck, but he drives it to work every day and he plays around on the weekends. This is the guy that just needs to get to work with a, a really dependable ride. Uh, something that outperforms what Ford did from the factory. Mm -hmm. um, and we always say, you know, built Ford tough, but with aftermarket stuff. Right. How much horsepower do you think it would be making? So uh, an engine like this uh, would support about 550 horsepower. Um, we have a next upgrade to this would be the workhorse option. Mm -hmm. With the workhorse option, what we'll see there is a uh, different camshaft profile, different connecting rods. Um, there's a few things that get tweaked, billet, flex plates on those engines. 
so that bumps up there to about 650 horsepower range. And then of course we go up from there. Perfect. And you know, Cass, is there anything else we're leaving out here on the engine side that we didn't cover? Oh man, we could talk for days, I guess, on this stuff, but uh, for time's sake and for the, for the, the watchers, uh, I think that pretty much gets it. Perfect. Well, thanks for showing us this engine. Hey, my pleasure. Got a really good build here and guys, make sure you're checking out what's going on at Show Engineering Performance. They're always working on really cool stuff and make sure you follow us at Engine Builder Mag across Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks for watching.